It's my favourite time of the day. It absolutely is. Yes, it's Talking Pints, and I'm joined by <laughs> Petronella White. Petronella, Cheers, welcome to the programme. <laughs> Cheers. First today. How about that? <laughs> you, you know, you've been deputy editor of The Spectator, and you write prolifically on the royals and the state of the country, and you've had a you know, distinguished career in journalism. But for those that don't know you very well, you, of course, grew up with politics and current affairs as abs- you know, part of your life fr- from about this I, age, I, I guess. I did, I did. I mean, I was, very, um, I was very, very lucky because I had a much older father well, on his fourth marriage. Not so lucky for him because it cost him a lot of money, but um, he had been a politician for decades. He was the youngest MP in the House of Commons just after the war. Was that the 45 election? Yes, wasn't it? it was yeah. 45 yeah. election. Um, so I grew up with these sort of titans of politics um, from both sides of the house because my father had been a Labour MP. Mm. Then we came with Thatcherite. Um, but we, we were friends with, he was friends with everybody. Um, for example, he'd go to the chamber, um, speak from the Labour benches, you kind of bellow at various Tory MPs and then... Or go out to dinner because two of my godparents were Tory MPs. How, um, Macmillan's son, Morris Macmillan, yes. Harold Macmillan's son, and Julian Amory, my godparents. Yeah. And also, I was very, very fond of my father's friend, Dennis Healy, who was enormous fun, a great what, photographer. And what a character. Oh, such a character and so cultured. I mean, the thing, the thing I miss. And I'm actually sorry for the young because they're missing this too. Uh, those sort of great people who were so cultured, so honourable, resigned if something happened <clears throat> yeah. on their watch, even yeah. if there wasn't, it wasn't their fault, like Carrington and the Falklands. Mm. It wasn't his fault that the Argentines... But the honourable, he, the honourable thing to do. Exactly. And, and Healy, you, know, you mentioned Dennis Healy. And, of course, you say what a cultured man he was, because also he was the beach master at Anzio, wasn't he, for the landings? I mean, incredibly brave things, these people They did were as well. incredibly brave. A lot of them, including my father, had fought in the war. Yeah. Uh, I think that's another thing um, that... Um, people... T- I mean, people today don't really understand what that generation went through, um, and... I know it's a very controversial thing to say, but I sort of regret in a sense that there's no national service because we all need a sense of cultural identity. And I think a lot of young people today are just drifting without pride in their country. Um, I mean, the educational system is a disaster in that respect. And I'm a very mixed bag. I'm kind of Mongol because um, I have Hungarian blood, I have Turkish blood, Austrian blood, um, everything you could name. Um, I could never go to crafts (laughs) (laughs) because... And I voted Remain, but I'm very patriotic. Yeah. And I love this country. And what annoys me is the way it's unnecessarily and wrongly Denigrated. So, you know, you say very clearly, I love this country, you regret the way kids are being taught in this country, and so do I. But where does this self-loathing come from? I mean, take, for example, slavery, the issue of slavery. Mm-hmm. You would think, from the public debate we have around that subject, that we were the only country in the history of humanity who'd ever engaged in the slave trade. There's no debate about the fact that, in fact, the Royal Navy spent decades trying to stamp it out. No debate about the fact that slavery happens all over the world today. Where does this particular self-loathing come from? It's, um, it's very interesting. I was reading a very, very interesting essay by um, H.L. Mencken, and it was called The Anglo-Saxon. And he identified various traits, um, and this included the English. And one of them was uh, a sort of, it was a combination between a thuggishness, but also an unease with themselves and a sort of self-destructive sense and a lack of general sort of pride. And, And by that, I don't mean jingoism. 
or Nashas, I, I mean sort of patriotism, and you travel to other countries in Europe, and they're very proud of their culture in a way mm. that we're not. Uh, you know, children in France, in Austria, they're still being taught the classics. Uh, in fact, they learn more Shakespeare than um, British children do, yeah. which is a great shame. Um, but I, I think that there's a lot of hatred in this country at the moment. When you say hatred, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, when you say that, you know, Dennis Healy was a friend of the family and Julian Amory was a friend of the family, now, politically, there are two figures who were miles and miles apart, and yet there was a culture, wasn't there, where... You could disagree with somebody quite fiercely, but absolutely respect the right of the other person well, to have that, that view. That uh, is, you cannot be civilised without that. Um, and it's also to do with manners. Um, I think people in this country have worst, the worst manners in Western Europe. And I travel a lot in Western Europe. And I'm quite shocked by the way that I still actually get up when an older person enters the room or mm. I give up my seat for somebody on the tube. Nobody else seems to do it. And also this intolerance um, is also a way of being disrespectful towards people. Even if you don't agree with somebody's view, you listen politely. This is the way I was brought up. And then you make your own points, but you don't shout them down. You don't yell. You, you don't try and get them sacked. You know, <clears throat> it's... So we have cultural decline. We have educational decline. We have behavioural decline. And is that part of what's led to such poor politicians? Yes, I think it is. But David, David Cameron is very much at fault because um, Cameron um, had his A-list. And to get on the A-list... It was all optical. You didn't need experience in politics. And the younger you were, the better. And mm. if you're a woman, it was Liz even Truss, better. of course, was an A-lister. Exactly. <laughs> no, without does, does that but prove the point? <laughs> it certainly does. But, but I wouldn't... Um, you, can't, you can't blame politics alone because it, this is across the board, unfortunately. It's societal. I mean, it's mm. our culture, and social media has a lot to do with that. Our culture has rejected experience, age, um, manners, tolerance for youth, a cheap kind of celebrity. Um, I mean, I sort of groan when I see these YouTube influencers. Well, a lot of that comes from America, of course. A lot of it, a lot and, of it and, and does. A lot of cultural influences do come from America. But our politicians... Did, and I'm not going to push this point too hard, but did Boris Johnson get what he deserved in the end? Uh, Boris, um... It's very difficult. Boris is a sort of split personality. Um, there's a lot of good in Boris. And there's a lot in Boris that is self-destructive. And I think Boris could have been a very good prime minister if he'd had the right people around him. And listened, um, because he has to be sort of saved from himself, from his weaknesses. Uh, for example, his kind of um, cursory relationship with the truth and, the, and that kind of thing. Uh, I think his instincts are generally good. I mean, to demonise, and there's something called Boris derangement syndrome. I don't know if you read about it, but people either... It's not quite the same as Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> no, but, but it, he produces similar reaction in people. They either yeah. hate him to a point in manners or they worship him to a point in manners because I always think that some of his diehard supporters are like members of a sort of weird cult, whereas there, there should be something in between. You know, he's got a lot to contribute, but he has weaknesses and faults. And uh, I'm afraid he squandered, and it's difficult to hear, he squandered I mean, was this there. 80 it was there. majority. I know. And look at where he's, I know. Where he's left us. And, and it's so awful. Let's try and finish on a positive note. The royal family. The death of, of the 96-year-old mm. queen. Which, I mean, I, mean, I, I, mean I, was sh I was shocked at my own reaction to it, how strong an emotional reaction I had to it. I think m much of the country felt that way, and... And, and during those 10 days of mourning, just behind us here, they were queuing all down the embankment, and I went out and talked to people, and I thought, wow, 
this restores my faith in decency and values. It's not all bad, is it, in the country? Oh, of course it's not bad. I will never give up on this country. I will never leave this country because I believe that um, we are essentially decent, but the essentially decent are getting shouted down by people in the media and social media who are making a bigger noise. So we have to be braver, don't we? We do have to be braver. Um, I try to be brave. I mean, I get so much sort of uh, hate mail, death threats and stuff on, on, on Twitter. Um, Is it worse for women than men, do you think? <laughs> That's an interesting one. The insults are probably worse because they're so personal. Yeah. But um, having a politician and father kind of help, because I remember when he was on, on an IRA death list, mm. so we had police guards around the house. Uh, and I read so many untrue things about him in the papers that I was fortunate to realise that these people, they don't matter. Do you know what? The best thing to do is have a drink and forget about it. Oh, exactly. Thank you for joining me on Talking Minds. <laughs>